oh man, we got the PDW45. This is a full auto, uh, three sets of flywheels, blaster, which is pretty neat in a small form factor. Look at this, it is super, super tiny. Um, let's check in, you know, let's check it out and let's see what's inside the box. So the box itself, it doesn't really like help you much. You're like, what's in there? But if you open it up, you almost have everything here to go from box to field. So, you know, we got the actual blaster itself. We have the uh, 10 included darts. You have only one magazine. I wish they would start giving you two. And then you have an Allen wrench as well as the protection goggles. So you almost get everything ready to go from box to field, minus a battery, which we'll talk about in a sec here. Now the blaster itself in the hands, you can see, I mean, it looks good. It's super tiny. I did not realize how small this thing was until I got it. I thought, uh, you know, when I was looking at it on the website, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. It, it must be fairly larger. Now I will leave a link in the description if you guys wanna check that out below uh, on where to get it, but still, it is considerably smaller than what I thought. Now, just to kind of show you how small, I'm gonna put this up against uh, the new Rival Fate. It's, I mean, I get it, the Rival Fate does have my inline extension on it, or maybe that's the uh, Mega extension, but still, I mean, it's, it's close, but I get it. This thing has, you know, three sets of flywheels, it has a pusher, it has a battery, it's full auto, and then the Rival Fate, right, is, is just a single shot. But I get it, I just wanted to give you guys an idea uh, because sometimes, you know, even in my hands here, it doesn't really show you how tiny this thing is. But I could see for, you know, close quarter combat, sure, this is this is kind of good. It's it's really, really tiny. I wish the rate of fire, which we'll talk about, is higher. Um, but still, super, super tiny. Now, the first thing I want to get out of the way is the mags. So this is the thing that I, I, I'm always seeing is, you know, with a lot of these different blaster manufacturers that are coming out, these mags are typically specific to the blaster itself. And for sure, that's what it is on this one. I did not order any additional mags for this particular blaster because a lot of times when I get a blaster, I would assume that it would be universal, but a lot of these aren't. So when I ordered the uh, Vector here, I was like, oh, that's gonna be a sweet blaster. I ordered like four extra mags for it. Sometimes there's like 10 bucks each. So you're talking $45 or something like that. When you get the blaster, it's just, not what you would expect it to be. And so you spend all this additional money on mags. And I just wished this would work with say, some universal Talon mags. I feel like are the universal Nightingale mags. I feel like those are kind of the industry standard now, but if you did some, maybe some trimming and some cutting, I could see it. I'm not gonna do that yet on here, but I could see it. But still, I only just have the one mag for this particular blaster. And it still looks kind of cool. It goes along with kind of the theme. I wish it wasn't black, maybe like a green or a pink or something like that. Um, this is battery operated, of course, but it does use an XT30 connector. For me, the only XT30 connector type batteries I have, are, which I use are for the Nightingale. So those batteries tend to have less juice or milliamps in them because usually the, the blasters that shoot those don't have three sets of flywheels and a pusher, right? but you can easily swap it out in the back here. There is a ton of room to swap to an XT60 connector and then use a, you know, a larger style 1500 milliamp battery to put in there. And I just like that a little bit better because then I have, you know, more juice to run all the stuff that's in here in comparison again to the Nightingale, which is just a single set of flywheels and that's pretty much it. So uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to throw out that XT30 connector. So either buy an adapter or just hack it off and put on an XT60 connector. Now, one of the issues that I had with this particular blaster was the same one that Dr. Flux ran into when I watched his review on this, where the pusher inside the back, let's just throw this up. There's a pusher in the back and feel free to pause if you guys wanna see all the other goodies in here, but the pusher in the back has a spring that is, right, that helps it go all the way back and then forward. Mine popped off probably about seven or eight mags into me kind of reviewing this. And the only way to get it back on there is, yeah, opening the thing up. There's no way you can pr pretty much put that spring back on. Now, the crazy thing about that spring is there is a post that it goes onto, and that spring, kind of the end of the spring has a circle, which it just slides over the post. And when you put on this uh, back cover, there is no post to lock onto the other post. So it's just sitting there, and eventually it will come off. So I ended up putting a, um, I think it was a five, uh, five millimeter uh, hex screw on there. I just put it down in there, kind of clamping everything, but I, it didn't have a wide head. So I believe the back and forth, the violentness of that, 
it popped it off a second time after about 10 mags. So I ended up doing again like Dr. Flux did and putting the screw and then putting some uh, hot glue on there and the thing hasn't come off since and it's been about 25, 30 ish mags. So anytime that I see an issue like that happen to multiple individuals, it's probably the same thing because mine had no screw, there is no clamp, it will fall off. There's no, there's no way. You can probably put the blaster like this and go like this and it would probably pop off. So just kind of wanted to throw that out there. But let's throw up that, again, just kind of that quick view of what's inside here, six sets of flywheels. The flywheels do say PDW, so I don't know if they're, you know, PDW branded wheels or they just threw them on there and they were somebody else's, but you could see there, you know, got the pusher, you got the wheels, looks pretty good. Um, there is one big tack rail on top here. It pretty much almost goes the length of the full upper portion of this. So you could stick all of your favorite Picatinny type, you know, stuff up here, scope. And I think it would go really, really well if you had a decent, nice scope up here, because you're gonna be close. I mean, you're gonna be like this, and I think it's gonna be the perfect distance if you wanna go. Now, one thing, oh man, that drives me kind of crazy uh, about this blaster also is it's loud. Uh, if you do it, I mean, it's, it's loud. Uh, I get that some blasters are, you know, more whiny, like more of a high pitch, but this is loud. It sounds kind of like a vacuum almost, even maybe a little bit louder. So you are not sneaking up on anybody. I don't know if it's like the shell design or what, how it is, but is, is, is loud. Um, the full auto on it, which we'll talk about here in a little bit is okay. It's not like a super fast full auto. I would assume with, you know, kind of the close quarterness of this particular blaster, you would want a high rate of fire. I feel like with the Nightingale, I can shoot faster use the same battery, have the same kind of feel, and shoot faster than the full auto can do this. I could dump a mag with a Nightingale so much more quicker than this, but who knows? Maybe somebody will make something for this, right? To make it shoot a little bit faster. Now, the grips feel really good. The rear grip here, it, it fits my adult hands nicely, but the front grip, look how tiny that thing is. That thing is, I mean, even like a child's hand, I, I, I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't even know if they'd, it would fit on there. Look at my hand, like almost engulfs the whole front of this, it's like, it's really, really hard to kind of use. But when I shot it, I ended up just kind of holding it like this. That's really the only way. It is super tiny, or maybe you just hold it like this, like you have two of them and go. I don't know, it's just ultimately tiny. But let's just get out, let's just get out and shoot this thing. Um, so it's coming in, the hottest it shot was about 145. But in all honesty, this thing shoots for about 130 to 140, depending on the dart that's used. And it's, gosh, man, I would love to say this thing is accurate. It is accurate sometimes, but other times it is wild. I mean, I am not that far from the uh, target itself. I'm probably like 25 feet away, if that, 20 feet. And I only am that close because this thing is like shooting to the left and to the right and above. And I'm just like, oh man. But sometimes you get two or three where you're like, hey, that's spot on. And I know some of you are gonna be like, hey, it's the darts, no. I tried all different kinds of darts out of here. I tried the darts that came with it. I tried Adventure Force. I tried the, the Max, you know, the Dart Zone Maxes. I tried uh, the Worker Gen 3s. I tried Cut Down Waffles. I mean, I tried a lot of different types out of here. And you can hear from the Full Auto on a couple of these. Uh, you know, the Full Auto is okay. It's not anything fast. You could definitely pull the trigger single quicker uh, if you were to, you know, have a single uh, power blaster for sure. But again, it is what it is on this PDW45. Now, again, you guys can go back and watch that. I usually cut that kind of, you know, cut kind of short. I was kind of curious too on what PDW stands for. It's personal defense weapon. It's like written on both sides of this blaster. So I don't know if this blaster is a real steel replica of something that is out there. If it is, let me know. But the design again is still pretty cool. This does come along with um, a nice set of goggles. I forgot to mention this earlier. You know, I kind of like this, uh, this kind of yellowish look to them. I did have these, I remember a long time ago on my uh, paintball goggles to help kind of brighten everything up, right? Kind of give it a different tint so everything is a little more crisp. So these are really, really nice. But the blaster itself, yeah, it's all right. I think that um, a lot of these manufacturers that want to stick six flywheels in these as like the de facto standard, no, you could probably cut this down to two sets of flywheels or maybe even one. And I would personally like 130 FPS, 120 FPS uh, with just a single stage, right? And, and, and the pusher, maybe spend more money on the pusher and have it be a little bit quicker. And then this thing would be 
rocking. But I don't plan to modify this currently right now. I'm gonna leave it in this state and then when I have time, maybe go in and see what I can do. But overall, it's not too bad. It is loud. It is kind of uh, battery hungry. I just wish it would have an XT60 connector for a larger capacity battery. I wish that the uh, pusher was a little bit quicker and then the mags. The mags for me are the ones that just, just really, just really kill me. Um, even if these mags were available on say like a lot of the, the off-brand stuff, perfect. I, I, that'd be awesome because you can just get four or five of these and use them on, a, on an edge or a, you know whatever it is. But still, I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. So if anybody's looking at it, you guys can check out the link in the description. I just kind of wanted to quickly do a review on this because I know some people will see this and, you know, probably run into that spring issue and be like, what's going on? And just have a quick, you know, quick hot glue screw fix and be done with it. But let me know what you guys think. I'm always curious if someone's going to pick this thing up or not, or if you're going to, you know, save your hard earned cash and get, you know, another blast that's out there. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Thanks again, Fox fans.